Here is another work energy practice problem. I printed it out kind of small, so let me read it to you. An asteroid with a mass of 10,000 kilograms moving towards the Earth with a velocity of 500 meters per second, a distance of 2.3 times 10 to the 8th meters from the center of the Earth. How fast will the asteroid be moving when it collides with the surface? Okay, so let's draw a picture. Here's the Earth. It's got stuff. Those are continents and things. If you don't draw that, I don't, it may not work. The problem may not work. Uh, and then here's my asteroid, like that. And it's moving with the velocity this way, V1, and it has uh, a position, R1. And then later, it's going to be right here. It's going to be on the surface of the Earth. They're not drawn to scale 10,000 kilogram uh, asteroid. It's actually pretty tiny compared to the surface of the Earth. Right there. And so now here, I have R2 and V2. So I know V1, I know R1. I know R2, I want to find V2. So it should be obvious that we should use a, the work energy principle because we don't care about how long it's moving. Uh, and if we did say how fast is it going after 24 seconds or 38 hours or whatever, uh, the problem is that the gravitational force is not constant. So it's not easy to calculate that change in velocity with a non-constant force. There are ways to do that, but that's just the way it is. Um, so instead, I can just look at change in position, going from one position one to position two. And if I want to do that, the first thing I need to do is to declare my system. So what system am I going to look at work and energy for? And I'm going to say the system of the Earth plus the asteroid. And if I do that, since there is a gravitational interaction between these two, but they're both in the system, then I can say my changes in energy are going to be equal to uh, delta K Earth plus delta K asteroid plus delta U. There's only one potential between them. They both can change kinetic energy, but I'm going to make the plausibility argument that the Earth doesn't move. If the Earth has a mass of 10 to the, something 10 to the 24th, and this is 10 to the 4th, it's just not going to, the force from the asteroid is just not going to really change the speed of that. So we can assume this is zero. And then I can say kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared, and gravitational potential energy is negative g m1 m2 over r. So let's just put down some values here. I have the mass of the asteroid is 10,000, so 10 to the 1 times 10 to the 4th. Um, the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. The radius of the Earth is 6.3 times 10 to the 6th kilograms, meters. And I need that because that's where it ends up. It ends up at the radius of the Earth. And G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. And I'll need those values when I want to calculate stuff. Okay, so let's write down my work energy equation. So work is zero, and that's going to be equal to, I'm just going to write K as the kinetic energy of the asteroid. We already said the other one's zero. So it's going to be K2 minus K1 plus U2 minus U1. Now, I always like to think, are any of those values zero? And in this case, the answer is no. None of these are zero. Be careful. Just because it gets to the surface of the Earth does not mean it has zero gravitational potential energy. So let's put in all our values here, or all our expressions. So I have zero equals one half m. m is a mass of the asteroid. v2 squared, that's what I'm looking for, minus one half m v1 squared. Now, this potential is negative, so it's going to be minus g m mass of the Earth over r2, which is the radius of the Earth, minus a negative, so plus g mass, mass of the Earth over r1. Now, you'll notice that the mass of the asteroid is in every term. So I can divide both sides by that mass, and I get rid of it. Uh, let's go ahead and multiply everything by 2 and solve for v2. So v2 squared. v2 squared is going to be equal to uh, this v1 squared, this is going to be negative because I moved to the other side, plus g mass of the Earth, and then I'm going to say, well, let's just put over R2, uh, and then minus g 
mass of the Earth over R1. And that's it. That's just like this. Um, and then I'd need to take the square root. So let's find, let's put in our values. V2 is going to be equal to the square root of V1 squared, 500 squared, plus uh, G, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th, times the mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to make this more complicated because I don't want to write that out twice. So I have 1 over R2, 6.3 times 10 to the 6th, minus 1 over R1 was 2.3 times 10 to the 8th. 2.3 times 10 to the 8th. Okay, and that's all square rooted. So that's a challenge to put in our calculator, so I'd like a challenge. Let's do it. On, clear, uh, square root. 500 squared. If you if you enter 500 and then just use a squared, it treats that as one number. So you don't have to put parentheses around that. And then I'm going to say plus 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Again, it's using scientific notation. That's one number. I don't need to put parentheses. Times 5.97 times 10 to the 11th. No, wait. 20, 24th, 24, times parentheses 1 divided by 6.3 times 10 to the 6th, minus, oops, what did I do? 10 to the 6th, minus 1 divided by 2.3 times 10 to the 8th. Close parentheses, close parentheses, enter. I got it. Okay, so I get V2 is 7857 meters per second, which is really fast. And you do not want that asteroid to hit your planet. It will be bad. The end.